All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Lonesome Robots Aerospace Hoyo Lander, which is being made by forum user Silent Velcro. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is all the parts necessary to build a fun new lander based off of the Apollo Lunar Module, and that is pretty darn cool. Uh, now, it is, of course, not meant to be a one-to-one -one perfect recreation of the LEM, but it is pretty darn close from all the images I've ever seen, and does make for overall just a fun and useful lander, though I should point out specifically for non-atmospheric celestial bodies. If you try and use this for a lander on, say, Duna, yeah, the engines are not powerful enough and you will perish, so stick with non-atmospheric things. So with that, let's jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at all the parts we do get. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison's sake and go ahead and turn on our mod filters. So we just have lonesome robots, perfect. And I forgot to turn off squad. Yes, there's me thinking today. Perfect, there we are. And now we grab the Ascent module. And there we go. A very, very cool looking capsule, which has some pretty impressive modeling to it and some nice texturing. Now you guys know me, I prefer stock alike stuff and this is definitely not in that wheelhouse, but it certainly does fit with the general theme of the other Lonesome Robot Aerospace packs. So it'll certainly fit in with those and overall even though it's not stock alike it is still a pretty good job I especially like the hatch up here a very nice looking and overall is quite lovely the one issue I have with it and why we're using the mark 1-2 command pod is well the size it seems small to me because of course the mark 1-2 command pod down here is made to hold three kerbals the ascent module is also meant for three Kerbals, and that just seems small to me for some reason. Now, I could just be imagining things, but you know what? Overall, it's still a useful lander. It's just something that kind of kind of grates at me a little. It, it just seems too tiny. But, oh well, that is just a minor weird issue of mine. But overall, as I said, it does use uh, three Kerbals, minimum of one crew member. It does have a built-in generator, which is quite nice, using 0.6 monopropellant per minute to produce six electric charge per minute. It does, of course, has a built-in reaction wheel, the typical crew report, 100 electric charge, 90 liquid fuel, 100 monopropellant, and 110 oxidizer. So overall, very useful little command pod and uh, just a beautiful, beautiful little thing. Now let's actually just start a new little ship here so we just have the ascent module. Don't save because, well, frankly, I'm just going to go through these parts and build the lander. So uh, after the lander, the next part you need is the little engine at the bottom of the lander for, you know, ascending back into space. So let's go to the engine category and we have the ascent Ascent engine here, which does have a nice alternator to produce one electric charge per second. It has a maximum thrust of 15 kilonewtons in vacuum. Part of the reason I said that this thing is meant for non-atmospheric planets. <laughs> that's not that's not a lot of power. Now, as for the propellants, it will use 0.43 liquid fuel per second and 0.526 oxidizer per second and does have a half a degree of gimbling range. Now, the engine goes right there into that little uh, alcove on the bottom of the ascent module. And there we are. We're set to go for the next part, which is in coupling, and that is the stage separator. This will uh, basically attach and eventually separate the ascent module from the descent module that you'll use to land. And there we go, it just clicks right on there on the attachment node of the engine and fits perfectly with the design. We then need to go back up to fuel tanks, which is where we have the descent module itself, which again just goes right on that node at the engine, which actually now is the node for the separator there. And bam, we have ourselves a gloriously large descent module fuel tank, which has a 
reaction wheel, 100 electric charge, 180 liquid fuel, and 220 oxidizer. Very cool thing overall. Now, of course, we need an engine for this descent module, and that is the descent engine. Now, this one's a bit more powerful at a maximum of 40 kilonewtons, and we'll use 1.147 liquid fuel per second and 1.4 oxidizer per second, and again with a half degree of gimbling range, and just goes right there. Fits nice and snugly. Now we have another couple parts that go up on the ascent module, the first of which being in the command and control, we have some lander RCS, and these actually attach to these uh, little bits that are popping out from the side of the ascent module. We have four overall, and as you can see, they are nodes, and so the RCS attaches directly to those nodes there, which actually that, um, I believe, needs to be facing out so it has one of those nozzles facing forward there we go and of course you do the same to the other side here perfect and oop, no i messed it up that way there we go fine lovely and so we attach with those four nodes we then have down in communications of course a array of uh, antennas here the hoyo lander antennas and that goes directly on this forward attachment point there and these do deploy quite nicely so they will go up and down which is always good and handy and uh, quite a nice quite a nice little thing now for them they are of course just standard data transmitter with an antenna rating of 500k so pretty good overall will require 20 electric charge per second though of usage now after that we have the landing gears which are also the landing legs and well let's just pop this to four symmetry and they of course go on the four corners as such and will of course uh, retract and deploy whichever you so desire now they do count as a landing gear so of course when you hit the landing gear group they will do so and you have all the various things for you to adjust on here of spring rating damp ratio anti-roll etc and I do I do quite like the animation for these actually it's quite nice quite nice and folds in perfectly and finally we have the hoyo oh we don't need the four symmetry anymore there we go we have the hoyo lander or well lander mobility enhancer which is a ladder and also can be deployed quite nicely and I actually do like the deploying on this because it kind of pops out and unfolds so if we retract it there as you can see it sort of pops out in the middle and is a very very nice little thing now I do believe that's it let's just quickly go through just to be on the safe side of things and make sure I am not forgetting anything but I do believe I am in the clear there we are perfect and so that is everything you need to build the Hoyo lander and have it fully functional now let's actually leave here and go to a hoyo lander which i put on the moon earlier which of course is its natural environment and so we can take a look at the interior and of course actually do the takeoff sequence and ascend into orbit now let's actually hope that this thing is um happy physics have been weird with it recently oh there we go yeah whenever i actually tried to land this on the uh launch pad back at the kerbal space center the when the physics loaded it would go crazy and jump up into the air but it seems to be happy now that it's in its intended environment on the moon so that is a very nice and useful now as you can see i actually messed up on the uh <laughs> <laughs> RCS placement on these uh, but you know what we really don't need RCS that much now do we and our antennae are up always good let's actually take a look at the interiors very cool now this uh, mod does come pre-packaged with all of the things necessary for it so it does have a you know, pre-installed with asset and uh, texture replacer raster prop monitor etc so it is a pretty impressive cockpit in here where we have a variety of uh, panels for our use whatever we need some very nice uh, displays here for our fuel our staging all that sort of stuff it is quite a nice and and if we zoom out there, so that is seat number one for the pilot. Good place in here. We then, of course, have seat number two where we can, you know, look out through those tiny little triangular windows. And we do have the window up top there for space. And then finally, we have the third seat in the back where we have some survival.
survival gear, first aid, spare parts, supplies, something that's dangerous, and personal stuff. And, of course, then I can see over to uh, the guys up front who seem to be bobbing their heads kind of awkwardly. But, oh, well, what are you going to do? And, yes, that is everything on the interior. A very nice interior. The one oddity is that. What, what, what's with the... What's with the stripey thing in the center? I don't know. But, oh well, that is the interior of our Ascent module. Now, let's actually decouple this thing and what the heck will take off into the ether, which should be fun with the Ascent module. That is its purpose, after all. So let us uh, first separate. There we go. And throttle up and fly and away. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, uh, of course we are on the moon, so it doesn't take us a whole lot. Oh, we're actually running low on fuel. I probably should have been paying more attention to my flight path, but meh, oh well. Let's kind of do this and see where it takes us. <laughs> but yes, if you actually plan your flight well, you should be able to easily uh, rendezvous with whatever craft you have in orbit. Though I do believe I actually may have used some of the fuel from the ascent module in my descent stage. Hmm, that's probably part of the reason I have less fuel than I thought. But there we go. Let's see on the moon what is our apoapsis there. So we are going at about 26, 27,000, etc. So yeah, if we would have had full fuel, we actually could have gone quite far. So you should have more than enough fuel to get into orbit and then rendezvous with whatever you do have in space. And overall, it just uh, makes for a very, very fun new lander. So if you would like to uh, try out this mod for yourself, and I definitely would suggest that you go and give it a try, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But yes, that's uh, pretty much going to be it for this episode today. Not really anything else to show you. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed. And of course, that you do come back for the next episode where we'll be looking at, hopefully another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching my friends and as always have a good one now go into a spin later folks